This video is not intended for people under the age of 13 as the game is rated T for teen. Hey guys, it's Brie Simulated here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Today we're going ahead and doing a quick little tiny living video. So as you can see right now, we're going ahead and doing a creator sim of a sim called Charlie Raymond. I basically just randomized her and then went ahead and gave her a tiny living makeover. I felt like she had kind of like a gothic vibe to her. Like she's the kind of girl who doesn't really care about what anyone else thinks of her. She just does her own thing and doesn't care about anyone else. She's a bit of a homebody, a bit of a loner. As you can see, She's a bit of a slob, so not sure how that would work in an actual tiny house. But we're going to go ahead and create her and her little cat, Tana, to go ahead and live in this tiny home. So as you can see here, I'm going ahead and figuring out how small I want the tiny home to be. And I'm realizing that micro would just be way too small for what I had envisioned. And I also think small would be too small for what I had envisioned as well. So I ended up, uh, sorry tiny would be too small I ended up just doing a small home so what I had envisioned was a lovely little house that sort of was tucked away in the woods off the ground and just really cute and tiny and classic like it looked kind of inspired by Victorian era but also very modern like maybe it had been there for a while in the woods it had gotten a bit run down and then she comes along and renovates it and brings it up to speed and then decorates the inside a bit more modern. I did start off with the outside looking a lot more modern, but I decided to go ahead and scrap that and on the outside go full like Brindleton Bay, old renovated farmhouse vibes. And then on the inside go kind of mid-century modern, just more plain and modern just a little bit more up to speed, a little bit fresher, just to create a more clean look on the inside because I think the sort of Victorian classic Brindleton Bay farmhouse look can look very cozy and filling to the point where the furniture is like too big for the space, which is really, really good for those big, lovely family homes and farm homes that I love to build in The Sims 4 in Brindleton Bay, but not for tiny living. So, this is basically the shape of the house. I'm just playing around right now with the stairs, how to get that different level. I basically wanted it to be off the ground. You're sort of pretending that maybe it's off the ground because there's a lot of snakes or something, a lot of bugs. I don't know. Maybe it prevents them from getting in the house a little bit. And she's just in the woods, so she's wanting to be off the ground away from, like, the dirt to prevent it from coming in the house after she goes for her hikes. I don't know. I just imagined her to be a little bit of a loner in the woods kind of sim. I also imagine that she would work from home. I don't know exactly what she would do. She's got a bit of an aspiration to be a jokester, I think. So maybe she like does videos, like making comedy videos. Or she also has some garden pots. So maybe she just makes a living off of that. And she's just got a very humble, small abode. And at this point, I realized I needed to add a second story. There was no point in doing like halfway between tiny and small. I might as well go to the max of the small and just make it bigger, you know what I mean? And it really helped me create that more lavish look to the house because at that point in time, it was kind of just looking like a box. But then if I did little jot outs here and there, the roofing was really weird. So the way you're about to see it in a moment is pretty much how the roofing stays. This is when I realized I didn't want to make it modern on the outside. I wanted to make it more classic on the outside. So I go ahead and change out those columns, the roof texture, and just do some different stuff with the painting of the walls because I just thought it looked a little bit off. But this build, I can proudly say, is base game only and tiny stuff is the only pack that I use. So you only need base game and tiny living to download this pack and enjoy it. If you don't have tiny living and you, in, and you download this, most of the stuff should be fine. The only thing that will be changed or you'll have to change is the door, like the external doors. And then obviously a lot of the furnishing. So you could technically download this house and it would be pretty much like a shell of the house. And that would still look good. You just have to furnish it and change a couple things here and there. So right now I'm trying to figure out the best way to go ahead and get some stairs in. And also maximize the positioning of the windows. And I wanted to use a Murphy bed upstairs. 
Because her bedroom is quite small and it's technically like open to the downstairs. It's not in a separate room. The stairs are just open above. I wanted there to be a way for her to fold up her bed during the day or maybe just when she has guests over. If she wanted to just create a little bit more room in her bedroom. Maybe if she just, uh, like, because there's a desk in there, I thought maybe she might work from home and having her bed laid down might prevent her from, you know, walking around the room more freely. She might just want to put it up that way then she can go ahead and just get more in that workspace and not have it feel like a bedroom, which I think is a really awesome thing about Murphy beds because you can put it up and it will just look like it's a part of the wall or just look like the couch if you use that version. Whereas when the bed's down, it sort of makes the room feel more like a bedroom. This way she can work in her bedroom and just feel a bit less like she's in her bedroom. <laughs> Count how many times I just said bedroom. All right. Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing this build. It actually took me a lot longer than I thought it would. I mean, I did also do a little bit of a creator sim as well, just to get me into the vibe of what kind of house I wanted. But this is a little bit of a longer video than I expected it to be for a sped up tiny build. I think doing the small house, it really is just a house. Like... I would build houses this size regularly, so it's awesome that we get some perks from building a house this size because it's just a little bit smaller. I mean, 100 tiles is pretty small, but I feel like a lot of my houses that I built in the past might qualify to be a small home. I'm not sure. I'll have to check that out. So anyway, the structural integrity of this house is pretty much done. All that is left to do is to go ahead and add in the finishing touches with the furnishings, so I hope you enjoy this build, I really, really love it. I think it would actually be really fun to play in and have a sim who maybe like works from home, does gardening, maybe even writes books. Like if you just put a little laptop on that desk, you could have them write books. I also did go ahead and install a bathroom downstairs. I was trying to play around and make it as spacious as possible and as usable. I do want to eventually do a house in a micro setting that is like full fledged. So I'm going to use every single pack, just like have no pack limits with that one. And I'll go ahead and make sure there's like a laundry, a full bathroom, a full kitchen, bedroom, like everything in a micro home. That's going to be my little self challenge for this one. Cause I did end up just going with the small house, not micro or tiny. I decided that having pack limitations would be awesome to try and make it a bit more challenging and a bit more downloadable for everyone. Because with this house, you can obviously go ahead and just have a lot more room. It's a lot more playable for more people. And it's only base game and tiny living. So that's a plus as well. The next trouble was trying to get everything to fit nicely where I wanted it to with the shape of the house and with the stairs. So I did get a TV stereo bookcase combo over by the dining area. I thought it could be good to have it there because then you can go ahead and watch some TV while you're sitting down eating. And then also I did get a sort of a smaller living space over by the back door. I really struggled with where to put that and how to position it. But I think that where it is looks fine. I was going to get another Murphy bed in so that then you could go ahead and have guests stay downstairs and then put a regular bed upstairs. But I felt like it was just more suited to upstairs and I didn't want to repeat. I really wanted to use every item. So I tried to utilize this couch, which is really cute. And then by the front door, we're just going to put a little sitting area where you could maybe just sit and chat, read a book, pat your cat. You will notice that in this house, there is no cats and dog stuff, which means there are no pet beds or anything like that. So it's kind of unfortunate because it means that the cat for this build doesn't have anywhere to like poop or live or anything or eat. But the main reason for that was I won't only wanted to use base game. So there is plenty of room left in the house where I imagined I would put the litter tray and the food bowl and the bed. So if you do have cats and dogs and you want to have an animal in this build, you'll just need to add that stuff in yourself. But I just basically wanted to use every single item from the pack. So I'm just going through and making changes to the house, filtering by tiny living only and making sure I just utilize a whole bunch of different things from the pack to showcase it in this build because I was doing what is it base game and tiny living only. So I wanted to make sure tiny living was more of a feature than base game because at one point I was kind of like, hey, it's kind of just looking like a base game small house. So yeah, overall, I think I did pretty well with this one. Let me know if you like it or if you would download it. I just had a lot of fun playing around with furnishing. And like I said, it took me a lot longer than I thought it would, mainly because I was going ahead and having to like fill the rooms so meticulously and just try and plan it out to make sense with the space. Whereas usually you can just chuck stuff in anywhere. 
And also I feel like doing a tiny home encourages you to decorate more because it's all smaller. There's less furniture. So the walls just feel like they need stuff on them all the time. I don't know. So her bedroom is really cute. Like I said, I imagine you could put a little computer on the desk and she would work up there during the day, put the bed up and then at nighttime, put the bed down. I think you can definitely get two Sims to sleep in that bed. It's just you'd have to get them to walk over the other side in the little gap by the wardrobe and then put it down and get in bed, which is why I thought it would be a good idea to have a Murphy bed and not a regular bed because then they can get in and out like that. I really love the way I painted the walls in this build. So in the kitchen area, you've got the subway tiles, which I think look awesome. Then the coral around the dining area, the yellow around the living, and then the blue around the entrance, like reading nook area. It just helps brighten up the place and make it look a lot less small and cramped and a lot more bright and open and inviting and really ties in the different color schemes. I feel like I've always been too scared to put like more than one bright color in a room. So doing three like that, I thought was going to look completely horrible, but I think it really helps pull the space together because it is all open. It really just needed something to pull it all together. And I think the wall colors and whatnot was a great way to do that. So outside I just get in a barbecue so she can cook outside, a little like sun lounger area to sunbathe. I imagined her cat would like sit on the other one and some garden pots. I imagine maybe she would grow like some of her own herbs and vegetables and fruits and stuff. And then I wanted to sort of try and blend the house in with the surrounding area with the shrubbery. I had a lot of fun doing the gardening for this house, which is strange. I feel like usually I hate it and like barely do any. But it was a lot of fun to try and make it all blend in and I'm really happy with the way that the house turned out. I would actually really love to play in this house with this character. I feel like it would be a lot of fun. Obviously, I would need to add in some stuff for the poor kitty because at the moment he has absolutely nothing. Is a cat a boy or a girl? I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, as you can see, I just love the way it blends in with the background of Brindleton Bay. I feel like it actually looks good on the gallery, which is hard to get sometimes. The angling for the gallery actually looked good. I'm not sure if anyone's downloaded it yet, but if you want to, my ID is Bree Simulated, so feel free to go ahead and download it or search by the hashtag Bree Simulated if you can't find it. I'm sorry the screenshots are kind of dodgy. It was really, really hard to get the camera into the zone, so I hope that they show the showcase the house okay and summarize what happened in this speed build. But anyway, until next time, hope you'll have a very snazzy day and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!